Thank you for plugging into this Family Life News podcast, streaming issues-driven, family-focused news. Welcome back to another edition of Issues in Education. Mondays during the Noon Report, we spotlight the issues impacting our public schools with Dr. Ralph Kerr at the Teaching and Learning Institute in Houghton, New York. Ralph, welcome back to the program, sir. I can't think of many places on planet Earth that are much more beautiful than Houghton is this time of year uh, with fall officially here. Great to have you back on the program, sir. Thank you very much, Bob. It's great to be with you. And yes, Houghton is a beautiful place at this time of year. Yeah, even in the winter time, it's beautiful. Yep. And those winters can be long, let me tell you. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, kind of a controversial issue to start this week. The New York State Board of Regents says that private schools must set academic standards that are, quote, substantially equivalent to public schools. What does that mean, substantially equivalent, and does this encroach at all? all on religious instruction. Well, it's an interesting development, that's for sure, and one that the superintendents of the local public schools don't like at all because they've been charged with the responsibility to determine whether the private schools do have substantial equivalent instruction. They don't want that at all, but again, the people that think they know better in Albany are uh, making that a rule. I don't think it will encroach on the religious instruction in private schools. I'll go back to the mid-80s when a similar law was passed related to public school superintendents supervising homeschoolers. And there was a major case, it's still a landmark case in New York State, parents would not allow the superintendent in the home, which I fully understand. Mm -hmm. And so ever since then, superintendents just sign off that the instruction is equivalent and let it go because nobody's going to make an issue over that. And I think it would be the same thing really with the private schools. Many schools, uh, and this has been a story we've been talking about for a long time, uh, are now employing the, the staggered start time to kind of deal with the bus driver shortage. I know a lot of schools in the Buffalo area have done that. Has this been effective in your opinion? Well, I think it, I don't know how effective it's been, but it really comes down to the chronic shortage of bus drivers. I saw that just last week the uh, Board of Education in Buffalo actually did approve that uh, proposal that they've been floating for a while about paying parents to drive their children to school, which again just reemphasizes the fact that districts are really hurting for bus drivers. Pennsylvania's waived for a period of three years the skills test that prospective teachers would take to get into the education field. This also is a topic we've talked about a lot, that teacher shortage problem. The argument in Pennsylvania is that those tests only serve to dissuade people from getting into the teaching profession. Your thoughts on that? Honestly, I just laughed when I read this story because they are claiming that there's been no study that's ever been done to see whether completing the basic skills tests in reading, writing, and math really improve the quality of teaching candidates. That may be so, but boy, I read that in some cases, the prospective teachers had to take multiple tests in order to pass them. And I'm not sure that people like that are the people that you want standing in front of your children <laughs> in a classroom. Yeah, reading, writing, and math. You would <laughs> think that those things would matter in school. Maybe not in 2022. And, and that kind of leads us to our final issue today, Ralph, and that is this Parents' Bill of Rights that's been floated now in Pennsylvania, very similar to what Florida has done to counter the woke culture that has permeated our schools so much much of it is driven by the big teachers' unions. Do you think it's time that states like Pennsylvania go ahead and pass the so-called parental bill of rights? Well, unfortunately, I think it is necessary. Schools need to tell parents about the mental health and well-being of their children as it relates to school. And I'm really concerned that some schools are saying we don't have to tell parents everything. We'll just decide what we are going to tell and what we're not going to. And the other thing is that parents need to know what's being taught in the curriculum. This particular law would ban sexual orientation discussion 
K through five. Yeah. That's a parent subject, but this is what this proposed legislation is going to take care of, and I hope it does pass. All right, we'll see. Uh, lots of, boy, we've been a lot of places in five minutes, Ralph. <laughs> uh, that's when you know you're doing your job. Uh, the time flies when you're having fun. We always have fun with Dr. Ralph Kerr. Hey, if folks want to learn more about what the Teaching and Learning Institute is, why do you exist, Ralph? You have a wonderful website where folks can go and check you out. What is that, sir? Thank you, Bob. It's simply whyrun.org, whyrun.org. 